Hi semuanya. Uh, for starters, I'm gonna turn off the comments section so uh, I can focus uh, on my discussion with the spiritual psychiatrist, Dr. Samuel Lee, MD from Sedona, Arizona. So, um, okay, so we're gonna wait for him to join us. Last week, I was talking with Dr. Samuel about how, hold on, I'm gonna do a little bit of a setting here. Okay, so let's see if Dr. Samuel is ready for our live session. I'm so excited. Um, so last week, me and the spiritual psychiatrist, Dr. Samuel Lee, we're talking about mental health and the holistic and spiritual approach in healing mental illness and medical dependency. But this week we are going to talk about relationships. I don't know why I just felt called to talk about relationships and how important it is to have um, to be educated about relationships. So let's start. Okay. Ah, uh, the spiritual psychiatrist. There you are. I see you. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay. We're waiting for him to join. Please welcome Dr. Samuel. Yay. Hi. Hey, Marshanda, how are you? I'm great and excited. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Yeah. How's the weather in Sedona? It's amazing. It's like a uh, hundred degrees, like ninety to a hundred. Sunny. The clouds are like super light blue and beautiful, and wow. it's special here. You've been here, right? You've been to Sedona. I love it there. I was there last February. Uh, do you go to? Do you hike? Like, do you hike? I, I'm sure you are. Like, yeah. the, go to the Bell Rocks and all of the hills I, and mountains. I, I Bell Rock. So I'm actually right after this. It's a full moon. So right after this. I have a wolf dog, so I'm planning on going out with my wolf dog to Bell Rock. And wow. uh, we're going to go howl at the moon. And um, Ooh, it's a wow. special day today. So, mm -hmm. Yes. So how are you feeling for our live, second live session? Uh, I feel good. I feel, I feel real good. Uh, I feel calm today. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So um, I was talking to you through Instagram direct message that uh, I have this idea to talk about relationship. Mm, good, good. And one of the reasons why I felt called to talk about it is because it's so relatable. Like everyone is in a relationship, whether it's with their family, with their spouse, with their children, with their friends, with their coworkers. And, you know, it's a huge, I think it's really important. It's a huge thing for people to be insightful and get education about the one one of the most important things that we have to know in life which is how to nurture our relationships so that it can contribute to our happiness mm -hmm. and our true alignment in life and that is not taught in schools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but not. ironically is like mm -hmm. one of the thing that one of the things that keep going on in our lives right mm -hmm. and um I want to talk to you on the, whether the spiritual aspect of it, about the social connections that we have. And I'm sure you know that one of the biggest contributors for a human being, an, indiv an individual's happiness, is mm -hmm. their social connection yeah. that they have in their lives. This is so true. This is so true. Yeah. Right. So how does it work? Yeah. How does our mm -hmm. relationship Mm -hmm. makes us fulfilled and happy how does it work yes that's an amazing um, i'm so happy you chose this topic marshanda um Yay! you know yeah amazing I, i'm so happy the angels gave you this message earth is a school and right. we are here to learn how to receive share and give love and so that's what we're here to do. We're here to learn through our experiences how to receive, share, and give love. And love is the cohesive power of the universe, yeah? So we were meant to be in relationship. Like, if you look at our ancestors, they all lived in, like, tribal communities mm -hmm. with family, 
you know, with friends, with aunties, with uncles. And so in my 10 plus years working as a psychiatrist, the number one medicine out of anything, more than anything else, it's connection, love. And so love is what connects. And how does that work? Well, when I am connected to someone, you know, when, when we're born, we're connected to our mother. And when we're, you know, breastfeeding, when we're being born, uh, there's a, a, a love hormone called oxytocin. Mm -hmm. oxytocin is the love hormone it's the most important thing so when we're in close connection connected through our soul oxytocin is released so when we hug someone and our heart chakra is open there's energy exchange that happens and oxytocin is released after 20 seconds mm -hmm. oxytocin naturally balances serotonin it naturally increases dopamine it naturally increases endorphins which make us feel good it naturally decreases pain sensation. And so no matter what anybody is going through right now, the best medicine on the planet is love. Um, you know, if you're going through depression, but you have a lot of love around you, it's okay, you're gonna make it. If oh you God. have autism, but you have a very fiercely loving mom, it's okay, you're gonna make it. So relationship connection is what we're here to do is how to learn how to receive, share and give love how to be in connection and the universe is intelligent. There are no accidents. So we chose our family. We chose our mother's womb. We chose our father. We chose our brother so that there's a lesson that we need to learn from, you know, each person that is in our lives. The universe is intelligent. There's no accidents. And that is like how to receive, share and give love. So if my friend like, you know, triggers me one time, I can say, oh, I blame my friend. My friend triggers me two times. I'm gonna blame my friend. My friend triggers me three times. I'm gonna blame. by the seventh time. I'm gonna be like, there's something I need to learn. It's not them. Maybe it's me. So I have to look inside and evolve in love, learn how to expand my heart, learn how to expand my center to love that part of me, which I'm having trouble loving in someone else. So we are all a reflection. If I can love all of me, then I can love everybody because uh, we are all connected through the power, the cohesive power of the universe, which is love. So this is an ama amazing topic. Yeah, I'm so grateful that we get to connect to talk about this. And um, when you talk about love itself, mm -hmm. uh, according to my own personal journey of um, practicing love mm -hmm. into my relationships, with other people, but first with myself. Yes. I went through uh, four stages, if I may share. The first stage, because I was born in a uh, dysfunctional family, my parents were, I had a lot of trauma grow, growing up. And then um, I felt like my first stage, I call it self lack. Mm -hmm. So it was lacking in my ability to appreciate myself to love myself mm -hmm. and as a result I also lack the ability to receive love from others mm -hmm. and then the second stage was when I started to want to grow to want to know mm -hmm. do I still have pain in me am I really okay now have I healed my old wounds and stuff like that I found that I started to feel like I am from self-lack and then I became what uh, in that, uh, what do you call that? The, sp uh, the, the dynamic theory, spiritual dynamic theory, where you're mm -hmm. first, you're self lack, and then the second, I'm just going to talk about what I'm, what I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. I forgot mm -hmm. what the theory. But the second is, so first is self lack, and then selfish. Mm -hmm. So I learned that I have to go through self centeredness. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I have to prioritize myself, my mm -hmm. healing, what mm -hmm. I need to acknowledge what I've lost, what mm -hmm. I'm disappointed at, I mean, the people mm -hmm. that hurt me and learn how to forgive them and forgive myself. And then mm -hmm. after that, I become what I call having the ability to do self-love. Mm -hmm. So self-lack, selfish, self-love. That's amazing, yeah, yeah. After I try to heal myself, go through all of the homeworks and exercises mm -hmm. and all of the healing process, that I went through, I'm able to practice self-love. And then after that, I will be overspilling 
with love yes, and I'll be, yes. I'll be able to become selfless. Mm, I love that. And that, when yeah. we're at that stage, we can share love to others. We can receive love. Mm -hmm. And that's like what we all want. But yeah. the thing is, as I said before, how to love is, was never taught in any school. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're on right. the planet. Yeah. So for that one question, <clears throat> what's your answer? How do we love? How? Yeah, I mean, it, it's such a simple question and there, I'm gonna give you a simple answer. <laughs> love is love. So, you know, I have a friend who sets his, his alarm clock, hmm. you know, uh, every two hours, fear or love. So, you know, at 10 a.m., fear or love, alarm. 12 noon, fear or love. 2 p.m., fear or love. 4 p.m., fear or love. And so whether we understand it or not, every single thing we do, every single word we speak, every single thought we have can be traced back to a micro intention of fear or love. Now, fear is the energy that separates us, makes us feel separate from other people. Love is the energy that connects us. And so the universe digs vibration and law. The, the energy we give is the energy we get back. So it's just very easy. Every single moment, just every two hours, check in. And you know, every two hours, send some love to someone. Send, okay. send a text message with a heart. Uh, you know, speak a word of love. You know, pay for someone's Starbucks in, in line. Right? How do we love? It's, it's an attitude of realizing, understanding that there is no separation. The love I give to someone is the love I'm giving to myself. But you, you nailed the, the stages of development. There are stages of development to love. So he who has been to the darkest of the darks or the most severe trauma, he who is forgiven much can love much. He who has experienced the darkest of the darks can experience the light even all the more. So that's the beauty of kind of this evolution of love and light, right? If I didn't experience major depression, I wouldn't know the joy on the other side of it. If I didn't experience all the trauma, I wouldn't experience all of the joy of overcoming the trauma and helping people with trauma. So how do we love is you said it exactly. We have to learn how to love ourselves, right? And how do we do that? Well, there's so many self-love practices one, you know, everybody has love languages and yeah. they don't teach us that in school. So some people, it's very important for them to hear the audible voice. And so you can think about your friend and say, I wonder what my friend's love language is. And so there's sacred touch, like gentle touch, hugging, touching. There's, uh, you know, speaking, people who love hearing the words. There's other people who love receiving love through like, you know, like writing a letter, like when they, they know someone spent time, like writing something for them, then that's what lights them up, right? So it, it really starts with awareness, being aware of like, and then knowing your love language, because everybody has different, there's a book called Love Languages. Yes, by right? Gary Chapman. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you read it? Yeah, I have, I have. Oh, I watched okay. a lot of videos on about Gary Chapman. Yeah. That's amazing. That's an amazing knowledge. Yeah. Amazing. So, it, but it starts with the intention. The intention is like the why behind the world. Yes, love is what we do, but the why, why, why do I want to, like, why am I going to do this? Because of love. And so love is just love for the sake of love alone. Um, for this, that's what earth is, is a school to learn how to receive, share, and give love. And then you start having fun with it, right? You're like, what is my friend's love language? What is my mom's love language? What is my father's love language? And then, you know, I've noticed for my father, like when I write him a letter, like when I say words to him, like my father, like he's a very stern, old fashioned man, but like something just melts in his heart and that's the feeling of love. And so, you know, I, I think it's just uh, loving yourself, number one, self-love always. So whatever your practice of self-love is, if that's meditation, if, if that's dance, if that's writing, if that's music, if that's acting, if whatever it is, having a self-love practice. And you said it so amazingly, it's like a cup. You fill your cup with love every single morning, whatever your practice is, whatever your practice is, you fill your cup, you know, you start off your day with self-love. 
looking in the mirror saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. If yours is language and you fill your cup and then you don't even have to try because love is actually what you are. You are love. And so you just overflow, like you said, like you just overflow with love to everybody around you. But the key here is you have to fill your cup, right? If you don't have, if you're running on empty, you got to have that self-love. Be selfish once in a while. Go take that time. Take that break. Go fill your cup with love. And then, and then you will overflow to everybody that you meet. It, it's, it's an energy. When your heart is open, there's an electromagnetic field that is uh, 5 to 15 feet, mm -hmm. right? So anybody who's in your field 5 to 15 feet, there, it's a frequency. So frequency is carrying information. Right? This information, you don't even have to try. You can walk into a room and change the entire room just by having an open heart. Right? And the key here is though, once you have an open heart, because it's going to be sending information to people. Have you ever noticed you walk into a room and then one person is they're negative and then it changes the energy of the room? Yes. But when, when we have an open heart and we walk into a room, it changes the dynamics of the entire room. And there's a science to it because there's frequency, it's carrying information, which is love information, which is joy, peace, you know, whatever it is. So love and, wow. and then, yeah, everything is, that's what it is, really. Just keep an open heart. Keep an open heart. Once you have an open heart, you can feel it. Don't close it. Because it's so easy to close your heart, right? Because when you're driving and you have traffic and someone cuts you off, all of a sudden you get angry, you close your heart. No. So you want to be aware. You want to be very aware. Right. And so once you have an open heart, you just keep it open. You stay aware and you keep it open and then you're going to spread love to everybody. Wow, that's amazing. That yeah. reminds me of um, what one of my mentors told me. So mm -hmm. I was telling her about um, this is, was this was a year ago when I was still uh, doing a TV series mm -hmm. and I had to shoot every single day from Monday to Sunday and wow. for like 12 hours a day. Sheesh. And then I told her it can be yeah. it can get. I can get bored, you know, like mm -hmm. there are times where I feel just devastated, just tired, bored of the mm -hmm. routine. And then she told me a practice that I finally utilize, mm -hmm. which is uh, when, I, when I'm on my way to the shooting location, uh, she would tell me to meditate and just mm -hmm. close my eyes and imagine when I arrive and I get mm -hmm. down, get out of my car and go into the studio, I am radiating love. Mm. I am radiating acceptance. I am yeah. radiating love. And yeah. so you're saying that the more that we practice that, the more we feel it, not mm -hmm. only in our mind or in our hearts, but it can go through our body, our physical system, yeah. and others yeah. can feel the vibration. Is that what you're saying? A thousand it's real. It's real. There's a Heart Math Institute which is now doing the science which proves mm -hmm. this. They can actually measure mm -hmm. the electromagnetic field. So the heart is like the general, it's the general of, of the organ. So beautiful advice. Because when you are, when you imagine and feel and put the intention that you're going to radiate love, that's exactly what is happening. So there's some people who can see aura, aura field, right? You know, the energy around the body. And so that's what they'll say is when the heart is open and it's radiating love, they can see, they can actually see the, the color of, of the, you know, the heart. And so when the heart is smiling, then the liver is smiling, then the kidneys are smiling because everything is connected. So you can actually like now do what is called heart brain coherence. When mm. your heart is, see every second your heart, your heart is so intelligent. Science will soon understand. It's already starting to understand. Your heart is monitoring everything going on. It's monitoring. It has. It's like a brain. Your heart is a brain. So the electromagnetic field coming from your heart is about 10 times as much as your brain. So actually, consciousness lives in the heart. And it's beating for us every single second. And, you, and you know, every, that's where unity happens. Uh, it's monitoring the blood pressure. It's monitoring. And so there's what we call heart coherence. So when the heart feels safe and it's open, you're exactly right. There's an electromagnetic field radiating from our heart that is sending information and that is literally, you know, lighting up everywhere we go. The heart is like this. This is love.
So yeah, keep just open your heart every morning, whatever your self love practices, and then keep it open. Just keep it oh, open. Oh, yeah, yeah. practices. Yeah. You told me about that mirror work where <laughs> I would I should uh, look in the mirror every morning and tell like a, a self love letter. Yes. And then I turn it into a video diary. Oh, beautiful. And, yeah. Yeah, and it was started since our fir very first call, our oh, private one-on-one -on -one counseling. And then yeah. I practiced it. I kept it. I kept all of the archives on my phone. So oh, I started the video with, uh, I would like rec record myself, a selfie mm -hmm. video. Cool. And first, there are three parts to the video. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, they're all 10 minutes long or five to 10 minutes long. Okay, cool. And the cool. first part would be a gratitude diary, things I'm excited oh, about, yes. my life and myself. And then the second would be a love letter for myself, appreciation mm -hmm. and why I admire myself and then my I love expression that, yeah. towards me and I saying thank you to me. And the last part would be prayer. Wow. And I think, oh my gosh, wow. it has changed my days. Mm -hmm. it's That's beautiful. Amazing. You know, That's you told me, you told me yeah. to do several other things like meditation, uh, sport, doing sports, eating mm -hmm. healthy. Yes. But I feel like there were days where I didn't do my exercise because mm -hmm. I didn't have time. But just sure, doing sure. that one thing, the yeah. video diary, self-love letter, gratitude journal, it just changes my power, you know, like mm. to go through the whole day. Like my system is set to yes. be, you yeah. know, brave and ready to face everything Ooh. from a very positive light. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing what you told me. Marsana, about. you, you, wow. You, you just, wow. You, you, you just opened my heart. You just lit up my heart with that because that's the key, like gratitude. I mean, I don't know how you, you should, you should make this into like a thing, like to, to help because what you're doing is, is the key. Like a couple minutes of gratitude in the morning, especially when you're looking at yourself and you're feeling okay. gratitude gratitude is the most is as soon as you feel gratitude you connect with your higher self and then you come into a state of receptivity so the universe can like pour out even more god can give you even more gifts more love more joy so we gratitude is the key dr emoto you know the japanese uh, scientist he wrote gratitude on water mm. he froze the water and he looked at the water under the microscope just through the word gratitude, what he found was the crystals of the water of gratitude were like this sacred, geometric, beautiful, sacred shape. And we are 80% water. Oh so when you're doing that gratitude practice, you're literally transforming your cells into this sacred geometric pattern, which is connecting you to your higher self, which is opening yourself up and telling the universe, give me more, give me more love, give me more joy, give me. So just starting your day like that is amazing. And then number two, by looking at yourself and, and appreciating yourself and, and cheering on yourself, man, that is literally transforming yourselves too. So your practice and then ending it with prayer, like prayer is claims to do nothing, but prayer can do everything. Mm -hmm. So I just got to say, whatever you're doing, like you should, you should definitely not only keep doing that, but like share that with as many people as possible because that you just, I couldn't make a better program. Like you, you just nailed it with that. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It was, it was actually, I heard it first from Lisa Nichols, that mirror okay. practice. Oh yeah. Yeah. Close. Yeah, Lisa Nichols. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a public speaker, a very famous yeah. uh, company owner of a youth movement, mm -hmm. and she's amazing. I followed her a long time ago, but at first I felt awkward, you know, looking at myself in the mirror mm -hmm. and then have to talk to myself. But then sure. when I talked to you a few weeks ago, it just like wakes it up and just, mm -hmm. I just got to do it. And I got to yeah. feel that love again, looking at myself. And that's the difference, you know, I yeah. you, when you can yeah. feel that feeling looking mm -hmm. at your eyes looking yeah. at your eyes looking at your face and then you feel that i love that girl mm. that's like that's a game changer a game because, changer. yes as a person you know i have i was diagnosed with bipolar disorder as you already know and i grew up uh in the public eye mm -hmm. since i was seven years old uh, i was mm -hmm. already doing a tv commercial singing and acting and mm -hmm. people are like giving so much opinion and it can turn mm -hmm. into 
like if if I don't learn a lot about personal growth and spirituality, I would take like people's comments into an approval or a source of validation. <laughs> and yep. it's way more powerful to get that validation and love from mm -hmm. within myself. Yes. So when you told me about that practice, I want to be able to, you know, look into my look yes. at my face, look into my eyes and feel that love again. Beautiful. I love that. Hi. So yeah. this is my daughter right here. Hi. 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 Say She's hi. beautiful. Hi. Thank you. This is Sienna. That's Dr. Sam. Hi, Sienna. Nice to meet you. Did you? You're beautiful. You're a little angel. Can I get a kiss? Can I get a kiss right here? Can I get a kiss? Okay, I'm gonna continue. Okay. I love you. Oh, you licked me. Okay. She's beautiful. Well, how old is she? <laughs> She's seven. Seven. Uh, what's her personality like? She's very cheerful. Good, good, and good. she's amazingly very mature in a spiritual way. Wow. I have to tell you that. Mm -hmm. She's like, there was a, a week ago, there was one time mm -hmm. when she was editing a photo on mm -hmm. my phone with an app. Okay. And she wrote a quote by herself. She's, she's, she wrote this, relax, the world is waiting for you. And I asked wow. her, what does it mean? How did she get that? Where did you get that mm -hmm. from? And she was like, no, just, I just felt that way. I just want to write it. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then one other wow. time, if I may mm -hmm. tell you about her, I don't know, her love is so powerful to me, mm -hmm. for me. And mm -hmm. then there was one time when my friend asked me, because um, I only get to meet her every weekend, because mm -hmm. the other half of the week, she's staying with my ex husband. Mm -hmm. And then one of my friends were talking on the phone with me and Sienna. Sienna was with me. And then he asked, What's your expectation? What do you want? Or your mother yeah and then sienna said i just want her to be wow and that's like wise oh my god she is so wise. Wise. Mm. yeah they are teachers our yeah. children are our teachers that's why jesus even said the kingdom of heaven belongs to the little children uh mm -hmm. because though when a child is born they have they have no programming they have no conditioning right it's like a blank iphone like everything they just look at you there's no conditioning there's no judgment there's no but then you know as adults we grow up and we learn like programming conditioning and then actually what we're really here to do is to unlearn all of our programming and conditioning oh, yes. so that we can be like little children again and children have imagination and children they just cry when they want to cry they speak what they want to say you know so mm -hmm. actually that's children are our teachers we're here to learn from our especially the children born, being born these days uh -huh. Woo! oh us. they're they're so connected with their higher so self and they're so in tune yes. like yes. when you say unlearn how do we do that you know as a, as adults how do we unlearn the things that are programmed yeah. mm -hmm. into our subconscious mind our being yeah. that's a great question so um we have to make the subconscious mind conscious so there's so many apps running on uh, a lot of us that we're not aware of but we have to make the subconscious mind conscious. Now, there's many ways to do that. So in meditation, sometimes, you know, when you go to Vipassana 10-day retreat where you're just breathing and, and meditating, uh -huh. all of a sudden, like a repressed memory will come forth and you'll, you'll remember, right? So it's like making subconscious mind conscious. Sometimes plant medicine, certain types of plant medicine uh -huh. can make the subconscious mind conscious because uh -huh. the first step of change, you have to be aware of the program to change it right. you have to be aware um there's also like different types of breath work that can make okay. the subconscious mind conscious so there's mm -hmm. uh you know holotropic breath work transformational breath work and mm -hmm. so when you're when you're like <sighs> the oxygen and carbon dioxide ratio changes so it's like almost like when you're asleep so the subconscious mind becomes conscious and so a lot of these thoughts will come forward and mm -hmm. um yeah, so there's, I would say, breath work, meditation, plant medicine, uh, and then, you know, are some ways to make the subconscious mind conscious. And then, then once you're aware of it, then you can go into the subconscious mind and reprogram it. It's very important. Yeah. Wow, that's very Dr. Amazing. Bruce Lipton on YouTube yeah. uh, talks a lot about subconscious mind reprogramming. Dr. Bruce Lipton. He's like the father of subconscious mind reprogramming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard his mm -hmm. name a lot. I'm going to take a look at his videos. Cool. So uh, cool. we're talking about relationships mm -hmm. and uh, according yeah. to a, Sienna, could you please close the door, honey? Thank you. 
So um, there's a research telling us that more than 50%, I think the number is way higher now, uh, more than 50% of marriages end in divorce. Mm. And then there are a lot of families, like uh, children with their parents, having conflicts, never-ending conflicts. And mm. um, I, I want to talk about dysfunctional relationship. Sure. sure. Well, according to <laughs> what you know, uh, what do you think is the definition of a dysfunctional relationship and mm. what's the characteristics? Sure. So first of all, communication soul to soul communication is the basis and foundation of any relationship i believe 50% of you're right more than 50 60% of marriages end in divorce but i believe this is because there's no soul to soul connection and communication so i believe sincerely that the divorce rate could decrease by 50% if couples every single night would simply connect their souls, right? And how do you do that? Well, mm -hmm. you simply, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul. It's very vulnerable. You know, when your eye gaze, have you done eye gazing with someone? It's, it's vulnerable because like the eyes are the window to the soul. Oh, yeah. So, and the hands are connected to the heart. The hands are connected to the heart. So if couples would simply sit down for 10 minutes every night, hold hands, connect their hearts, look into each other's eyes, now, the breath is the movement of spirit within the body. The breath is the cord that ties the flesh to the soul. God breathed into man and man became. So the breath, Eskimos, when they kiss, they touch their nose and then they just breathe together. Right? Yeah. In Avatar, they breathe together. Right? There's a reason why. Ancient cultures know this. So hold hands, look into each other's eyes, and take like, you know, seven slow, deep breaths together. As you breathe together, your brain waves are going to synchronize your heartbeat is going to synchronize and your breath. And so you're exchanging soul. You're connecting your souls together. Mm -hmm. And then for five minutes, the, the, the wife gets to speak from speak, not to attack, not to defend, not to accuse, right? The simple intention is to communicate. Most couples will, like a lot of the times someone will attack someone. As soon as someone attacks, someone's going to defend someone attacks, someone defend. 99% of all problems are simply a lack of effective communication. Hmm. So now as the wife, their souls are connected, they're looking into each other, they're breathing together, and then the wife simply communicates, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. This is simply to communicate how she feels. Right? Now the husband is simply listening, not to attack, not to respond, not to defend, but simply to understand. So listen, we have two ears and one mouth. Listen, simply to understand. It's not even to agree or disagree. It's simply to understand the other person. Then after five minutes, the wife speaks. Then it's the time for the husband to simply say, okay, I hear you. I understand. I respect how you feel. And then the husband gets to speak from their heart. While they're looking, their, their souls are connected. This is how I feel. This is how I feel, right? Mm -hmm. Five minutes, five minutes, simply to communicate. There's no attacking, no defending, no right, no wrong, no agenda. The intention simply, the souls connect and they communicate. 99% of all problems can be solved through soul to soul communication. Okay. And then once they're done, they say, and then simply the husband says, oh, how can I support you? What can I do to support you? And then, and then the, you know, it says, they, they express. And then the, and the female says, how can I support you? So I truly believe soul to soul connection. And there's ways to do that, but you have to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to show your soul. This is my soul, vulnerable. And then simply connect through the breath, through eye gazing, through, through hand holding, and then communicate. Maybe you play your favorite song, like calm, peaceful music. The wife gets five minutes and the husband gets five minutes. And then you take turns just communicating. If couples would do that just for 10 minutes a night, I really believe, you know, like uh, the relationship can be, you know, like improved so much. Because once you look, you're able to fall in love with someone's soul. Mm -hmm. It changes everything because our souls are untraumatized. Our souls are undamaged.
Our souls are perfect, whole, and complete. Right? It's our higher self. So uh, when you can see your beloved soul, mm -hmm. it changes everything because you fall in love with their soul. Now, yes, their body, they're pretty. Yes, they're beautiful. But if you're just going to just physical, that's, that will wear off. Right? Uh, you know, even the emotional connection will, man, uh, you know, wear off. So, but when you're connected to each other's soul every single evening and looking and gazing and loving at each other's soul, there's a beautiful alchemy that happens where you, you continue to fall deeper and deeper in love with uh, someone's soul. That is beautiful. Yeah. And I believe uh, we can also put that into practice, not only with our partner, but also with our mother, with our father. Yeah. Right? Yes. I think it would, wow, that would bring up a lot of maybe suppressed feelings. Yeah. And if we can go through that with open heart. Mm -hmm. so yes, that's, that's the key. For that's, the relationship, that's right? What the, that's what the music is for. The music is there. Music is for the heart, yeah? So the music is there, like, you know, you play a heart. Because, like, my father, yeah, like, he's such a stoic, old-fashioned Korean man. But, like, the only language that opens his heart is music. Music is a universal language of, you know, music brings people together. Music is a universal frequency, right? Mm -hmm. So... That's why I feel like, you know, and, and dementia patients, Alzheimer's dementia, yeah. they forget their family member's name. They forget what every single thing they'll forget. But the one thing they will never forget is music. What they, if you play a song they grew up on, because the cells, the music is stored in the area of the brain that it's, it's a different musical memory. So they never forget that. And it's in their cells. So that's why, like, to connect with your parents, I really suggest, and family, people who is difficult, play music. And can you imagine, Marshana, like, gazing at your father like holding hands breathing together and then speaking words with an open heart like connecting and speaking words to your father and your father sitting there your souls are connected and you're telling your father everything you ever wanted to express to him Ooh, that wow. that would be you know that could be pretty powerful oh my god and to add to that i so i i learned about hoponopono right oh about yeah the letter formula that says uh, that, that 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 is divided into four sections the first is please uh, i'm sorry please mm -hmm. forgive me thank you and i love you yes. so uh like i don't know maybe six years ago <clears throat> my father and my mom my mom and my dad was divorced when i was eight years old mm -hmm. and then i got disconnected slowly and slowly with my father until we're totally completely disconnected i don't know where he was and we got we have no contact for like, I don't know, eight years or more. And then I, 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 I was in the middle of missing him, but also blaming him at times, mm -hmm. you know, not when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And then one day uh, when I got to finally meet him again, I decided to write down a hope on, on a letter for him. Mm, beautiful. So I made the first paragraph, mm -hmm. every sentence I begin with, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Pa, I'm sorry for blaming you because you i i felt like you you left our family blah 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 i'm sorry for blah 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 i'm sorry for blah blah blah. and in the second paragraph let's start with please forgive me please forgive me for ever being angry at you please yeah. forgive me for ever being disappointed at you and etc and then the third was thank you thank you for teaching me strength thank you for teaching me independence and inner wisdom and then the last was i love you mm. And I said, I love you because yeah. even in your, even with your absence, I still have the ability to accept you for who you are. And, and, and then I read the letter to him. Wow. And oh my Ooh. God, if it was he in tears, he was like, oh my God, that was so powerful. Yeah. It, it can also be a powerful tool to connect with our loved ones. Mm -hmm. Marshana, that is so beautiful. You just, you just opened my heart like you're inspiring me to write a letter to my father right now. Um, really, 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 really. I've been meaning wow. to do that. And so right now, you know, just, yeah, thank you for sharing that. You just literally touched my heart. And um, it's really, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that this week, uh, you know. Um, wow. So thank you so much. Yeah, that's, that's so super beautiful. Um, thank you. Wow, I'm so, yeah. 
I feel so humbled and grateful to be able to be the vessel that yeah, yeah. ignite that inspiration within this yeah. conversation in you and hopefully yeah. for our viewers. And yes. um, yeah, everybody and, write a letter to your parents this week. Everybody oh write, God, a, write a letter. Right I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Yes. And Mar yeah, if you're watching this and you heard Marshonda's story, that is super powerful. And our parents, yeah, to, you know, to write them a love letter, you know, on, you know, and to write them, that's going to that's gonna be something so beautiful. So I just encourage myself, you inspired me and anybody watching this, uh, this week, uh, I'm going to do it. So join, join me and Marshonda and writing our parents a love letter this week. Oh my God. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So mm -hmm. I I'm going to head to questions now. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So there's one interesting question. Mm -hmm. No, 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 not this one. Not this one. Uh, sorry. How to, okay. Questions. Okay. So do you guys have a serious functioning relationship? You mean maybe she means each of us. Mm. What do you mean functioning? Serious functioning relationship. Serious fun. I think she meant um, a healthy functioning relationship. Maybe you mm. can answer first. Okay. Yeah. What you about know, you? Well, I don't. I'm currently. Uh, I guess they're saying in my romantic life. Well, I'm not sure. But um, no, I'm currently single. I'm mm. uh, in a relationship with myself. Uh, learning how to love myself every single day more and more and more and more. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm at a level of consciousness where I'm open, where I'm open to, you know, different forms. Of, I just, I realize I'm here to grow. I'm here to learn. And relationships are like the greatest mirror uh, to show me and teach me about myself and to grow in love. So, um, but I, I, I like to think at this point, I'm, I'm working on my relationship with God or God within me. And uh, working on that every single day, learning how to love myself every day. So that's my functioning relationship at this point in my life. And then, and then service, like, you know, using that love, like Marshawn, you know, overflowing with love to, to serve other people. And I realized, you know, Jesus said, what you have done into the least of them, you have done into me. And, and so we are all connected. So when I can love someone else, I'm loving myself. And I am, I am, I'm not going to lie. I'm exploring a, a little bit of Tantra, you know, mm. like sacred, sacred sexuality. Uh, mm. with a really beautiful beloved uh, partner um so i'm i'm exploring that because there's you know really really beautiful powerful uh ancient um ways of 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 connecting with someone um through the energy of the chakras and mm. there's ancient practices that mm. we can practice to learn how to cultivate and harness this energy and move this energy, this creative energy into our heart and from the lower chakras into the heart and into the third eye. And we can also learn how to create with that and send that energy into our auric field. So I'm, I'm actually just uh, learning about these practices. I'm excited to learn about this, these ancient uh, ta tantric practices. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, but my relationship is loving myself. <laughs> what okay. about you, Marcanda? Me, uh, well, same with me. I, I'm exploring my life right now by myself. I'm single and I am um, at this phase where I'm focusing on my spirituality, on learning new knowledge and personal growth and sharing with other people and contributing for global consciousness and doing this Instagram live like yeah, we're yeah. doing right now. And amazing. it's just an amazing journey. And I believe in that notion when, you know, talking about, romantic relationships mm -hmm. in the past i was uh some there were times where i felt like i was really looking for the one you know what i mean mm -hmm. but then i a friend told me when you're looking it's hard for you to be able to find them so just let go let yeah. go let go yeah. and you're gonna be attracted to the right one for you what what's mm -hmm. your say about that Doctor? yeah 100 percent. that's amazing um so a lot of people go into a relationship. If you go into a relationship with a with lack, like I lack something, so I'm looking for something outside of myself, mm -hmm. that's going to lead to more lack. That's going to lead to a dysfunctional relationship. So actually the key is that a beautiful, healthy relationship, ideally speaking, is when I am perfect, whole, and complete, and satisfied with myself. Because in all truth and reality, every person, the left side of the body is the feminine receptive side. The right side is the masculine. So we all have a masculine and 
the feminine side. And when we can bring those into balance, we realize that we are actually who we've been looking for. So a healthy relationship is when two people who are already not, they're, they're not lacking anything. They're mm -hmm. perfectly happy, whole and complete in of themselves. And this person is perfectly happy, whole and complete. And then they decide, oh, you know, I'm happy by myself, but I'm going to share this happiness with someone else. That's the beauty of starting a healthy relationship. But if I go into a relationship saying I'm not happy, so I'm looking for happiness outside of myself, mm -hmm. that's actually going to lack leads to more lack. And so that's actually that lack inside of me is going to be exposed in the relationship. So actually, yes, I truly believe what you're doing right now is working on your spirituality, working on yourself, and then you're going to increase your vibration, and then you're going to attract someone who's at that same vibration, right? So I think the best thing we can do is work on ourselves, love ourselves, and become to a place where we are perfect, whole, and complete in of ourselves. And from that place of wholeness, uh, you know, as our vibration increases, we're going to attract someone else who's also perfect, whole, and complete. Then there's no lack. Then there can be what is called non-attached love right that's the beautiful that's the most beautiful form of love it's the way god loves us that's amazing. so yeah there's no attached there's no like you know like mistrust there's no like possession it's not fear-based it's yes. not fear-based like you know yeah. then the girl then my girlfriend could go out and have fun and party and go dancing and i don't have to worry because i'm perfect home there's no lack in me and i trust her soul i trust who she is i trust you know so it, it creates this ability not only that to serve where she can go serve and, you know and and do all these things and i don't have to worry because i'm perfect whole and complete in of myself and she is perfect whole and complete in of herself and we trust each other because we trust ourselves that's amazing yeah. Okay, another interesting question. Are humans suited and capable of single monogamous relationships by nature? Mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, what do you, what do you yeah. say about that? Like, well, I mean, uh, I say like everybody is different. Mm. You know? But like what I'll say is love is a choice. So are people capable? Yes, they are capable. But mm -hmm. if you look at the birds, there's certain species of birds, they find one bird only, and they stay with that bird. They like fly across country every year to be with that one bird. So there's a lot of people in nature, a lot of parts of nature, a lot of animals in nature are monogamous. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the way they're wired. But there's also different species of animals who are not monogamous, who are polygamous, right? So we humans are not the ruler of nature, we are a part of nature, right? So. What I'll say is this, love is a choice. You ever see those like big motorcycle people and they have like a little girl on the back and they say, if you ever leave me, I'm going to, you know, do some, that's not mm. love, mm. that's fear. Love is a choice. So when two people come together, mm -hmm. there's a magnetic pull, there's a magnetic energy frequency that they're attracted to each other, yeah? But after a while, like two people, they entrain to each other's frequency, so that magnetic, pool becomes neutralized so there's a honeymoon period right after the honeymoon period it's neutralized and okay. then it's and then it becomes do i want to wake up every single morning and choose to love my partner so it becomes a choice right and then and then so is it possible yes it's possible if the if these two people and so there's something really beautiful about that when one person chooses one person and they choose this is going to be my king this is going to be my queen so it's possible but also as your consciousness increases your vibration increases there comes to a point like in fifth dimensional cities of long time ago mm -hmm. because everybody trusted everyone because everybody was not in fear mm -hmm. there there were certain relationships that were not monogamous be, but they loved and trusted each other. So that was in the tribal living, right? Mm -hmm. Where because I trust, you know, my partner, like, even though we're together, like, I trust her, then she can, you know, some, some relationships these days, conscious people are going into what they call open relationships, where they trust each other, and they communicate with each other. And they believe that, you know, as long as there's transparency, honesty, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm then they trust each other to be in an open relationship. So what I'll say to that is it's possible, but it's a choice, right? It's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice that becomes a practice, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. That's very basic, but we need that constant reminder, right? 
Like yes. It's a, Yes. Common no common sense is not always common practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's always good <laughs> yeah. to go into all these conversations about personal growth, relationship, and spirituality as a very powerful reminder for all of us. Yeah. And definitely. yeah. Mm. The next question is: To what extent can we expect our parent or partner to do their part? Is it healthy mm -hmm. to depend on them? What, what do you think, Marshana? I think um, we need to first be, we need to prioritize being introspective. Mm. So we need to first prioritize thinking and giving and doing our part in the mm. relationship. What can I contribute? What can I improve in myself? What can Amazing. I Amazing. change? What can I know more about my pain mm. and then transmute them or communicate them with mm. my partner or with my, or with yes. my parents? Mm. How can I be more authentic with them and express more of my love to them? Mm. And yes. then I believe that once we change our perspective, once we change our behavior and improve mm. them, in a more loving way, our partner or our parents will change their behavior and their expression of love. Amazing. Amazing. You, yeah, that's so beautiful how you just put that. Um, you know, the external world or other people is a reflection of our own internal belief system. Mm -hmm. so, um, so if you want to never, we can never go into a relationship expecting anybody to ever change that that's not that's not possible yeah the only thing we can change is change ourselves and so when two there's deep spiritual wisdom behind this when two people are getting along it's because of a vibration right so the the dad is putting out a vibration and i'm putting it and so these two vibrations together are somehow they're in harmony right but when two people are not getting along it's because they're, it's because of a vibration there's some type of vibration there that is not in resonance, that is not in harmony. And so because I cannot change my father, I cannot change this other person, the, my, my, the only thing I can do is change my vibration, right? So anytime two people are getting along, it's because of a vibration. And there's deep spiritual wisdom behind it. There's actually math behind this. You can actually, like a book called Alchemy of you know, Love Relationships, every two people, between two people, there's a, a vibration. Right. And so instead of trying to change someone else's vibration, that's not possible. What I can do is I can go change my vibration. How? Well, there's many, so many ways to change my vibration through breath work, through meditation, through music, uh, through adjusting my attitude, through, you know, um, through my words. Right. And through opening my heart. Right. So instead of trying to change anybody else, exactly what you said is I can you know, focus myself on changing my vibration to be in harmony with this other person, or I can take a break, you know, I can take three breaths and I can leave the situation, you know, so, and, you know, you can never change anyone else and it's not good to be dependent on anything outside of yourself, then you're a victim. Anytime I'm dependent on anything outside of myself, then I'm not in control because I'm something outside of me is connecting, is controlling me. And then I go into a victim mode. I'm helpless to something outside of me. So instead of that, exactly what you said Marshawn. to go inside and look inside and change my attitude exactly what you said to how can i serve how can i love this person instead of focusing on me if i just change my attitude to in this moment how can i be loved how can i serve someone how can i help someone then that actually automatically shifts the vibration off of me to loving to loving someone else that's yeah. amazing yes mm -hmm. that's amazing mm -hmm. and um another question from funny how to create a healthy, functional relationship with family members who aren't spiritually conscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, realize and understand everybody came, was born on this planet for a different purpose or divine blueprint. Mm -hmm. Some people like for, you know, you and I, uh, you know, we were interested in a part of our divine blueprint is spirituality. Uh, for some people, you know, they came on this planet with different karma, with a different purpose. So realizing and understanding everybody is different. Not everybody is meant to be on the same path I'm on. So um, realizing and understanding that. And, and then I think the best thing, though, is you can do for your family is actually to lead by example. You know, 
you don't have to say a word. Your life and your vibration will speak for itself. Um, so it's like your energy is like the, 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 the vibration that you give off is already communicating with them. So there's actually sometimes nothing that I have to do or say. I just, like your daughter said, just be, right? And keep working on me, increasing my vibration. And pretty soon, I guarantee you, you don't even have to say a word. Uh, in the beginning, they're going to think you're weird. Oh, my God. Like, what is, what, is, what, is, what is my son doing going to meditation retreat? Oh, my God. Yoga. Oh, my God. They're going to think you're weird. And you just keep doing you. You keep raising your vibration. You keep doing you. Then one day, you're going to see that they're actually, they thought you were weird. It's going to take some years, right? So exactly what you said, you take some selfish time to work on you, work on you. One day, your family's going to come up to you and say, they're going to ask you for advice. One day your family's gonna come up to you and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna come to you for help. So don't worry about changing anybody else. Just keep raising your vibration, keep raising your vibration, realize everybody has a different mission and a different purpose, and one day you're gonna see that as you continue to evolve and grow in consciousness and awareness, your family's gonna come to you for help and you won't even have to do anything. That's very and pray powerful. for them. Pray for them. Prayer is amazing, prayer works. Uh, prayer, you know, give thanks mm -hmm. in advance. Prayer is when you give thanks, you're grateful for your family in advance and you see them as perfect, whole, and complete already. Because love is acceptance. Love is not trying to change someone. Oh my God. Right? Oh my God. That yeah. hits very, very. Yeah. Oh the my God. Love is to accept someone exactly as they are and see them exactly as they are, as perfect, whole, and complete already. That's love. That's and that will change them. That will change them. Okay. I have yeah. one last question, but I will yeah. try to... Uh, are you still seeing the question here? My I'm comments sure. are off. Oh, it's off? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, I have one last question for our very, very amazing conversation. So uh, my last question is something that I think most people go through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is grief and loss. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether you lost a family member, whether it's your parents, whether it's your child, or even as, uh, not as major as that, probably just losing the person that you love due to a breakup or a mm -hmm. divorce. Like, mm -hmm. how do you go through grief? Yeah. And go back up? Yeah. First of all, grief is a natural, beautiful expression of being human. It's a part of being human. It's necessary. Grief is unexpressed love. Grief is necessary. So anytime we lose something that we love, it's actually very, very important to have a period of grief. So even animals in nature, mm -hmm. when they lose a loved one, they grieve. And if we don't grieve, actually that's gonna cause more problems later. So it's very, very important. Every single tear a human being cries has a very, very unique release. It's like a purge, it's a release. Of, and it's, if you look at it, it's, it's a beautiful, amazing sacred geometric shape. Every tear is unique. So it's actually very, very important to honor the grieving process, to allow ourselves to feel sad, to allow ourselves to cry, to allow ourselves to express. That is the beautiful part of being human. And grieving is necessary. It's a part of love. When we lose something we love, we grieve for it. And that is a very, very, very beautiful, necessary expression of our humanity. It's healthy. Okay. So when you cry, cry, cry. Don't try to stop crying, cry, express Just it. Let the feelings be. Yes, let the feelings be and, and allow it and let it flow. Yeah. Oh this has been an amazing conversation, Dr. Samuel. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, my and... friend. It's a joy. Yeah, thank. I'm so proud of you. Um, I I'm so excited for you. You are. All yeah, I'm excited for your path. Keep doing what you're doing. 
you're helping so many people, Marsanda. Keep it up. Oh. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah, thank you so much for the impactful, all the message, the knowledge, the insights, the, mm -hmm. you know, like the words from above, from your higher self to <laughs> share with all yeah. of us. It's very impactful. And this I is, hope This is what I enjoy, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hope to see you again in another session. Okay, so sounds good, Marsanda. Have a, be a beautiful day there, yeah? Yeah, have a good day. God time. bless have Indonesia. Rest. I love I love I love that country. I'll be Thank there soon. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah, I really you. do. Take care, Dr. Yeah. Sam. Okay, so much love. Bye. Bye.